Hello there. So this is day two of uh, the actual painting. Uh, the goal is either one, to finish the base layer, which looks actually pretty good. And second of all, do um, actually the actual uh, sort of texture. And an important note that I forgot to mention, um, uh, also that process requires me to start adding more um, different colors. Because if I use just layers and layers, layers of gray, um, it won't show. So I'm gonna add a bit of white just to make it a bit brushy, if that's a term or a word, and uh, go from there. So, uh, second layer was applied, um, it looks kind of okay, I'm a bit wobbly on this because um, I don't think I did a mistake of not filling, let's say creating a big batch for the entire surface, which was my biggest mistake, so it, the paint is not consistent everywhere. But I'm going to let it dry and see the result, worst case we can add uh, another extra one or two layers just to make things even. Also. From my readings on the subject, um, so what we're going to do next is uh, I'm going to add a bit of black paint on top of the gray and the white so that gives it a bit of more depth and more colors, more colors, more different uh, neutrals uh, in the colors because you know black is not a color, white is not a color, it's just a luminosity issue. So um, I'm going to probably add a layer of uh, black, I'm going to let this one dry. I forgot my ventilator, so it sucks. So big tip, uh, if you're ever doing this, get a ventilator to accelerate the process, since my time to spend on this is really short. So that's it. Uh, no time less this time. I'm going to show you the results in a few minutes. As you can see here, um, the surface is a bit uneven. So on the left side, it looks pretty solid. And whenever you move to the right, um, some patches start to appear. I, hopefully this side that I started first, will actually transition to be something uh, more to this than to this. Um, so I'll stay tuned. At worst, like I said, we can add another one or two coats of layer of paint just to make it even. But for now, it looks okay. And it looks like shit. So here are the results of the second layer, which is actually the most crucial one, and that I messed up. So lesson learned. Uh, I didn't add enough water into the canvas, so that's what happens. But the thing is, we're trying to test. Uh, there's no, there's no consequences except a bit of money loss. So that's it. So here are the results. So that's it for that. Um, so I think tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply another layer, um, probably a darker one, just to like even it out, and uh, hopefully those patches will disappear. I don't think so. Um, so the solution would be to. Add another layer. If that doesn't work, then we'll add another primer coat and then start fresh again. Um, there's no reason why to throw this canvas away because it is there, that, that cloth. So we'll use them as much as we can. And uh, that's it. Always uh, play like the boar. We will adapt. Anyways, I'm hot, I'm sweaty. It's uh, time to go home. Tomorrow for sure. So, day three of this little disaster, um, right now we're about to um, maybe put a light correction layer. So, I'm going to see, it looks actually pretty decent, but it uh, looks spotty a bit. So, we're going to put a small fix. So, wait. So, this is my solution. So, we're going to do one layer of paint, we're going to do a big batch of, uh, of paint, but using uh, this as a squirting thing. I just saw it recently on the Franklin Franklin Backdrop uh, Instagram, really great Instagram, and also a really great backdrop, so I'm going to be inspired by him to get this done. So I'm going to use this as a means to disperse the water on top of the thing and then brush it off very softly, uh, either with a brush or a broom or whatever I can find right now. So um, I'll mix a big batch of paint and water and then spray it on and see the results in three, two, one. 
so it's a failure um, so my first attempt was a complete and utter failure which I expected um, but um, so basically I think my second layer was way 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 too colored and um, also I'm thinking right now that the best approach when you start is to apply just a white like a white coat so basically a white primer and then add some dirty color to it so let's say you want to have a very light neutral gray then you do a light uh, prime coat and then you add your colors afterwards um, I think it's the best approach for now because right now it looks like a mess there's patches everywhere and uh, my my thing is not consistent enough to be called a canvas so we're gonna reprime it and uh, start over again my biggest suggestion if you guys want to try this out is to avoid and deal with the consequences because right now you're going to be wasting a lot of paint like just trying to get it correct um so using a let's say a a 4 by 6 instead of like a complete uh, 12 by 14 which was a terrible mistake but uh yeah, so using a small smaller canvas in order to start practicing uh, maybe do some tests and then seeing how it yields out uh, based on the techniques and on whatever you learn but this has been a great lesson learned and again it's not much money lost i mean the actual backdrop itself cost me 56 dollars the can of paint was uh, 39 dollars and all the accessories I already had it so now it's just a matter of now it's just a matter of really like starting over again and then practicing to get it right so that's what we're gonna do so second coat of primer coming up and right now it's drying as you can maybe see in the background you can't and that's it so see you in a few minutes so as you can see So this one is textured and this one is not textured. So what I decided to do is, um, because I'm still trying to master this process or understand it, we're going to um, we're going to test this one in a light gray and this one in a darker gray. So this one I'm letting it dry. I'm gonna fuck it up as much as possible or make as many mistakes as possible, and then go for this one. Because right now I'm lacking the gray paint and I don't feel like buying a second camera. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, just I'm waiting for this thing to dry, as you can see here. And then we'll move on to this one afterwards. So it's been day three of uh, this little disaster. Uh, but we're learning, I mean, very quickly. So, and uh, also update on the dirty water thing. Update on the dirty water. It works kind of well, but not enough. So my thinking is, um, this should be applied whenever it's completely dry and it's going to give it like a slight texture but not that much, uh, not, not much of a difference. And as we want to be subtle in this one, we don't want to be too dramatic and uh, that's it. So really I just made a big pot, I just made a big pot of this mixture here and then I'm spraying it with a bottle of water that has a small hole in it. It's really simple, you just take a bottle of water and then you drill the hole using a hammer and a nail. That's it! What's up guys? So, um, the change of plan actually is going pretty well. So I reprimed the actual canvas again, um, making it really, really flat. So that I can actually restart working the actual coats of texture. Um, by doing that, I use my dirty water that I made before. So uh, about three parts of water and one part of um, about three parts of water and one part of paint, and I uh, started applying it very slowly, there deliberately with a paintbrush. So I'm using my little bottle that I showed you before, plus a brush, and I'm just going. I'm applying some water, and then I'm just splashing on it, and I'm just like really painting it on, as I seen in the Franklin Franklin backdrop video. On Instagram so it's working pretty well uh, texture is building slowly so it's good it gives it a bit more controlled I guess that if you're more experienced with that process it gets easier with time so let's say you, you can actually add more paint and control over it but I think it does a nice balance between building texture very slowly like that it actually works well and you can control how however it goes and afterwards we're probably gonna distress it with a piece of rock uh, I know there's these, um, uh, I'm not sure, these moon rocks or something uh, that you can actually use to like, let's say, dirty it a bit or maybe big distress it a bit. Um, so that's the plan. So I'll show you the coat of paint that I made right now. 
so right now this one has the primer whiskey it's reprime plus it has two coats of slight texture I think I'm gonna go for about maybe five or six I can knock these up every hour or so while they're drying but right now it is late and I need to go eat so I'll show you the actual layer that I built and then uh, we'll get out of here and then we'll see you in day four which is probably gonna be Monday or Tuesday I'm not too sure it doesn't matter for you guys because you're watching a video yeah so as you can see uh, it's a bit different than the previous footage as there is now more texture in it, slightly more. Again, we we'll always go for the minimum amount possible because these things are super easy to over textualize and uh, as you can see this part is dry and then this part is still wet and it's dry here. So it's coming along very nicely. Um, as you can see a streak of uh, white paint here. So the goal is to actually build it up very slowly. So maybe we'll go more aggressive with more paint, but from my experience, it hasn't worked very well. So I think we'll avoid it. So see you next time. See you in the next time. And uh, big apology for the sniffles. Uh, the paint is actually making me like leak. It's unbelievable. So I look like a cocaine addict, which I'm not. I think so. Well, no, I'm not. So sorry for that. You can hear me sniffing all over the video. What's up, guys? So this is day four of actually laying coats of dirty water on top of my canvas. So I learned two major things that I think if you want to do it, you should also maybe include into your thing. Um, so I made some dirty water as like I told you before, um, see previous clip, and uh, it's working pretty well. But I noticed that if you don't actually put enough of it, like I mean, if you put that dirty water on top of the canvas, it won't be wet enough and it won't absorb and it won't give that texture. So. Whenever you make a dirty water, like make it as thin as possible, not too much, and just make sure you soak the hell out of your canvas. That's the number one thing I can give you. And second is uh, I my test is actually doing pretty well, so I didn't reprime the dirty one that I showed you before because I was just too lazy and I didn't feel like spending more paint. So I did a darker layer, and it's actually going pretty well. Let me show you. So. Currently have the fans on, just doing their thing, and uh, it's doing super well. So I'm gonna apply more coats. I think I'll have about three left. Uh, right now it's 3:09, and I think you can do like one every 45 minutes, one to an hour. So I'm gonna do three more, and then see the results in a few seconds. So yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, again, n number one tip is make your dirty water as light as possible. And whatever you apply it, like soak the hell out of your canvas and brush it off. So I'll show you the technique of how I get it done basically right now. So the dirty water is ready. And the brush is ready. Again, we're using protection here for the canvas. We don't want to walk in it because it's gonna leave patterns into our canvas. So first thing we do is lay the water. As you can see, I'm putting a lot of it just to make sure it's wet, and then we brush it in. Again, the goal is to fill at least resistance as possible. So whenever I feel like my brush is feels dry, whenever I'm applying the coat, I literally add some more water. And the goal is to make it shiny as hell compared to this. If you do that often enough. Then you will win the game of painting your own canvas. Hey guys, so this is it. Here is the, here are the finals or the final photo that I made for this session. So I wanted to do a self portrait because it was easy. Afterwards, I had someone else uh, to come in just to do a little test. Uh, I kind of like the results. The black one came out really great. Um, the, the what changed between the black one and the gray one is I decided to do a small wet blend. So basically, what I did, I mixed my light gray one with my darker one, and it created interesting depth. Um, sometimes there was wrinkles on my backdrop, which I don't know how it happened. Uh, I think it wasn't tight enough, or there was maybe too much liquid. Not too certain. Uh, this will be how it has to be fixed in the future. Also, the gray one was a bit flat. Um, it looks like a pretty much neutral gray background that's just rolled up. 
Um, anyways, I didn't do any photos with this one. I'll have to test it again. But again, it was interesting to look at. I think I'll be doing it in the future because I actually like the experiment. I like the, the, the process. I like the build. And uh, although, although it's a slow process, uh, it's really interesting. Also, next time I think I'll do it instead of doing it on four days for two or three hours, I'll take a full day from 8 a.m. to like 5 to 6 p.m. Just do a coat of prime and then build up my colors very slowly and using fans also to accelerate the process. So if I have any suggestions to do, uh, again, just make sure that you understand the after the prime, understand the wet blind. I think this is a crucial part to build texture. Uh, the dirty water seemed to have worked a bit, but I wish it would have had more impact on it. So if ever you do the, the dirty water thing, just make sure it's slightly colored differently. And also what I also noticed and then I spoke to my friends, they, they all agreed, is that it's easier to build from dark to light than going from light to dark. For some reasons, it's just so, so, so damn easy to mess it up if ever you're not building slowly. Anyway, so these are my lessons. My too long didn't read if you want to make it really short. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you appreciated this video. Again, I really enjoy doing this and I highly recommend doing it. If you don't have the patience to actually get a back job done, then I highly suggest the Franklin. They look really great. Uh, if you have the budget, the Elephant. I know Savage also is in the business of doing these. And uh, one guy that I know, Ethan Alex, is also in the business of doing back jobs. I hope this video was also useful to you if you're probably planning to do it. And if you have to do it, please do it because it's a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. And if you like the content that I'm putting out, uh, please make sure to subscribe to stay tuned. I will post now two videos a month so we can all be joyful in the world of YouTube. That's it, folks. I hope you're having a fantastic day. hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if ever you are on Facebook or on social media and you did your own and you, because of this video, please tag me. I want to know. And if you have any tips to share with the community, just make sure you comment below what you found uh, that was useful to understand while doing your bag job. Thanks again for watching. Cheers and good luck.